Hi, and welcome to Take 5. My name is Ivan Ramirez, and today joining us we have... I'm Ryan Prisbell. Okay, Ryan. Well, uh, you gave us a really exciting conversation about uh, networking last time. What are you going to talk to us about today? So today I'm going to talk about how to interconnect with the GCP environment. Okay, so for the viewers in the room that have no idea what interconnect is, give us like a few sentence summary of what that is. So that's really how do I get my data from my on-prem site or something outside of GCP into the Google Cloud environment. Okay, perfect. So go ahead. Okay, so when it really boils us down, there's, there's five ways to interconnect with the GCP environment. Right. Um, the slide here shows you sort of a simplified way of how to think about these. So this matrix provides a couple networking layers on the left, whether you're talking about layer two or layer three of the networking stack, and then whether it's a dedicated or shared interconnect. So what I mean by that is dedicated is where you're connecting directly to Google's edge, right? So this would be connecting to a peering fabric or a peering router directly mm -hmm. versus shared where maybe you, myself, and a few other customers are connecting to a partner, and then that partner is connecting to Google. Okay. Is there any drawback of going directly to Google or through a partner? Because if you were to give me the choice, I think I'll go directly to Google. Right so now. typically what we see with customers is if they want what we call sub-rate bandwidth. So everything in the dedicated column, whether it's a layer two service or layer three service, is going to be a full 10 gig port, right? So if you come and you say, I want you know a gig or I want 500 megs of bandwidth connectivity, we would say, you know look at the shared, look at the partner services, because what they do is they subdivide the bandwidth. So you don't have to buy a full 10 gigs mm -hmm. worth of capacity. But with Google, you have to go for the whole 10 gigs. Yes, everything we do on our edge is 10 gig port. Okay, understood, understood. Now, is there any uh, location requirement when you're doing direct peering? So let's say that I'm hosting my own data center uh, in my office, right? Uh, I, I'm guessing that I have to be close to a pop or something. Correct, like so for the layer three services, right? So when we say dedicated to layer three, that is available at Google Edge Pops, right? Okay. And you can go to peering DB, search for Google's ASN number, and that'll pull up all of the, the Edge Pops where we have direct or dedicated uh, direct peering. So what's again the difference between direct peering and direct interconnect? So direct peering is a layer three connection, mm -hmm. right? So what that means is uh, you're getting all Google's public net blocks pushed to you, right? Mm -hmm. So when I say public net blocks, we're talking about everything like YouTube and search and all of the other Google um, APIs and various things that we do that are public facing live within those net blocks, mm -hmm. right? But when you're getting a layer two connection, you're actually getting a VLAN that pipes directly into your cloud environment. So the difference being there is if you're going to uh, use our layer three service to get into your cloud environment, you're gonna have to overlay a VPN on top of that because most people are running private address space in their cloud environment. So you can't push private address space across that public direct peering interface. So you'd, you'd acquire that and then you'd run a VPN over the top of it, right? Versus our layer two services, you could actually push that private address space directly across that link. That's amazing. So is there any bandwidth differences between direct peering and uh, dedicated interconnect? Nope, they're both 10 gigs. So there's no, in, in terms of bandwidth limitations, of the same. Now, when you start to run a VPN tunnel over the top of, say, a layer three direct peering link, VPN is going to have some bandwidth limitations in terms of per tunnel, you're going to get anywhere from a gig and a half to about three gigs per second throughput. But those limitations then wouldn't exist within the dedicated interconnect. Correct. Uh, and for dedicated interconnect, because you don't need the VPN, you can natively push your 10 dot space across that link that that limitation doesn't exist. So let's say that I'm a customer, right? And I am wondering, well, should I go the direct peering or the dedicated interconnect? In what circumstances would I go the direct peering route? It sounds like the dedicated interconnect might be the best way to go. Yeah, we get probably more requests for dedicated interconnect and direct peering, but there are some advantages to direct peering. Direct peering is free of charge, right? We don't charge anybody for connecting to our edge ports, mm -hmm. right? Um, and like I said, the, the flip side is you have to run a VPN over the top of that. So. It's funny, all my customers like free, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, versus dedicated interconnect, we actually provide an SLA for that too, though, right? Mm, so if you, you know, you're getting free connectivity with a direct peering solution, but you're mm -hmm. also getting no SLA from Google behind that. Now, that's not to say you're not going to have, you're going to have poor network connectivity because there are ways to build that infrastructure and make it very robust, mm -hmm. right? But when you get dedicated interconnect, if you build it in a certain fashion, you can actually get an SLA supporting that as well. Okay, so let's say that I'm a customer and I'm sold on the idea that I should set up a direct, direct peering or direct interconnect. What's the process by which I can start doing that? Sure. So like I said, dedicated interconnect is probably the most requested product that we offer mm -hmm. in terms of interconnecting to Google. So let me show you how easy it is to set that up. So here you're in the console, right? Yep, I'm in the console. So I'm gonna go down to connectivity, click on interconnect. I'm gonna click up, set up a connection. I'm going to name my interconnect. Oh, good name. 
I'm going to choose a location. Makes I'm going to choose my hometown of Chicago. Okay. Right. Capacity, as you see, we talked about, you can only get 10 gigs, but you can actually get multiple. So we create lag groups so you can actually get larger pipes if you want more than 10 gigs, but it starts at 10 gigs. You click next. It by, by default is going to create a redundant interconnect. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a redundant interconnect, but it's gonna give you a warning that it's not covered by an SLA if you choose to only have a single port. Let's click next. Now I would enter my contact information, a technical contact. Then I would review that, then mm -hmm. I would submit it. And then within a few minutes of you actually submitting that, you're actually gonna get a LOA or letter of authorization saying these are the ports that have actually been assigned to you, mm -hmm. at which point you have to arrange connectivity to that. Gotcha. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. This was awesome. Yeah, you bet. Happy to help. Appreciate it. Thank you.